This is the GAC Weekly, presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams. The Southwestern Lady Bulldogs continue to roll through the conference slate, but were matched in one of their high-octane performances on Thursday. On rivalry night, Southwestern hit 18 three-pointers in a win over Northwestern, defeating the Rangers 97-79. The Lady Dogs are now 10-0 in conference play. The team right behind them in the standings, though, Henderson State, matched that output from long range. The Reddies knocked down a program record 18 from outside the arc and took down rival Washita 79-59. Henderson is now 8-3 in the league. Kelly Lampo was named Player of the Week, averaging a double-double of 24 points and 14 rebounds as the Lady Bisons split the week with Arkansas Tech and Southern Arkansas. The Men's Player of the Week was Mike Fofana, who scored 19 and 20 points in wins over Washita and Arkansas Tech, respectively. The Reddies have won four straight and find themselves in the upper half of the league standings near the midpoint of the season. Southern Nazarene has climbed back up to a tie for second place in the men's standings, the league favorite taking a 58-57 win over Oklahoma Baptist. Both teams are now 8-2 in the GAC and right behind Southern Arkansas at 9-1. Southeastern, the team picked second in the GAC in the preseason poll, is hanging around, currently at 6-5 and five in GAC play. Savage Storm coach Kelly Green recently picked up his 500th win overall as a head coach and is headed for number 100 at Southeastern. We had a chance to visit with him about the milestone. Coach, you've recently come across your 500th win. I know you've surpassed that mark now. That's a hallmark, I think a testament to being in the vocation as long as you have, but also you've had to win a few games along the way as well. Talk about what it means to you to have crossed that 500-win plateau. It means you're old, Joey. <laughs> I mean, you know, it does, it does show longevity. Uh, eventually, you know, you should... If you're fortunate, you should be able to get uh, quite a few wins underneath your belt. Fortunately, they don't count losses the same way. But, <laughs> you know, really what it means is is you've been very fortunate to coach a lot of very good players and have a lot of very good coaches work with you. And, I mean, make no mistake, I mean, um, those are the things, and, and those are the things we get into coaching for. Uh, because we enjoy the camaraderie with our assistant coaches and the people you work with and watch players develop. But, um, you know, it, it, it shows that you've, you've been doing this a long time. It shows that you've had good people working with you and you've been fortunate to have administrators and people like that that believed in you. Coach, it's become a little bit of a running gag over the years that uh, when we talk for the GAC previews, we talk about the fact that one season really doesn't carry over into another season. Well, how do you have that kind of longevity then if one season doesn't carry over? Or, or, I mean, how do you start over from one year to the next like that and still keep a run like this going? Well, I think I, I, I think your maybe your philosophy or the, the, the things that you, uh, your foundation that you have, uh, stays the same and you try to recruit players that fit into that foundation and then I do believe as a coach you've got to, you've got to be willing to change uh, sometimes the changes are bigger each year than others uh, but you've got to be able to adjust to your players talent because we can't always recruit somebody that is just like the person that graduated and moved on and nor do you, nor I think as a coach do you really try to do that. Sometimes you try to replace somebody, but not necessarily with the player that does the exact same thing because there's, there's no, no two players that are the same. Right. Coach, speaking now again with Coach Kelly Green, the Southeastern Savage Storm basketball coach. Uh, your team this year now 8-2 and two on the season, 4-2 and two in the Great American Conference. Uh, this season looks to be going well. Talk about your year right now and how this has come along. Well, we we've uh, you know one, one good thing I think we had going for us this year, as opposed to a couple of the last few years, is our schedule has been a little bit more in our favor, and meaning we got a little bit more practice time uh, this year. I mean, we had approximately you know twenty five to thirty days of practice before we actually played our first meaningful game and um, in the past we've had to go a couple weeks and and then we're playing in one of the conference challenges or or some things like that and we were able to get a little bit more practice time and and 
you know, Im- implement uh, a few new things. We also um, got some new guys that we were able to get in with some of our returnees. So our returnees, hold, our, our holdovers, return, um, returnees that um, that played substantial minutes last year were kind of our base, and then we were able to put some guys in around them, which really helped. Coach, we talked at the start of the season about parity in the league, and, and we've mentioned that word before, but it looks like you look at the standings right now in the Great American Conference as there are – Four teams tied for first place, seven teams overall within a game of first place. The league has parity, but that parity seems to have just increased and the level of play within the league has increased. Can you talk about the GAC, where it stands, not quite at the midpoint yet in this season, but pretty close? Well, I think a few things. Um, one, I noticed the other day that, if I'm not mistaken, nine out of our 12 teams had winning winning and or 500 overall records. And that says quite a bit for your league right there. Um, yeah, I know whenever you and I talked early in the preview, we talked about you know a few of the teams that um, th- that were that were listed lower in the conference standings. And I remember we said that you know it's it's not that <laughs> these are tenth, eleventh, twelfth place teams. It's just somebody's got to be there, right? And as you start as you start doing the you know, starting at the top and moving down, it's like, well, well this isn't a 10th place team or 11th place team or 12th place team, but somebody has to end up being there. You know, and, and I think uh, right now, uh, in particular, Oklahoma Baptist is showing uh, they've gotten out to a good start. You know, they lost some close games in their preseason um, in their preseason schedule, but they've won some close games. And... Uh, and have really gotten off to a really a good a good good start, and you know a couple of the other teams, uh, Henderson. You know we knew Henderson and Harding and Oklahoma Baptist. I believe those are three of the teams that didn't make it at the playoffs last year. We, we all knew they were going to be better, and and um, we've seen firsthand two of those, and and are going to see another one here on Saturday. Well, Coach, congratulations again on 500 wins. I know that you're headed for that 100 win mark. They're at Southeastern as well, and you know you you say it's it's just a sign of being old. I think you have a lot more wins in you, Coach. Well, I hope so, but uh, you know you never know. You're fortunate to be able to to coach this game, and and you're fortunate to be able to work with good guys, and and I I, I really appreciate that opportunity. And and again, as you get older, I think you appreciate it even more and more each day. This has been the GAC Weekly. The GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To see and hear this and more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please visit oklahomasports.net and arkansasports.net.